Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel. We're going to make a shorter video today. Now, uh, I kind of left you guys half-handed. Now, I don't know if that's a thing, half-handed, but I just came up with that. I think it's pretty clever. But I left you guys with kind of half a done job, right? Now, what we did was armor and weapons and item. We added some stuff. We made sure the inheritance was working. And we kind of made sure that the... Uh, the inventory class could get these armor and weapons and store them. Now, what I left you with, it, it was a big problem. Now, if you if you know C++, you're going to understand this. If you're kind of new to it, it's going to be really strange and kind of hard to follow, but I'm going to try my best to explain. Now, what happens is that when we do, the problem occurred here, is in-game. When we created our new character, the first time was okay, but the second character was the problem. Now what happened is that every character has an inventory, weapon, and armor. Okay. Now what happens is, in-game, when you create a new character, that character is created as a temporary object. And a copy of that temporary object is sent into the vector that holds all the characters. And the temporary object is deleted. But what happens is that inventory has a pointer in it. A pointer pointer. And what happens is a thing called shallow copying and uh, the thing is that our first character has its inventory and that inventory has a pointer 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 to objects in memory now when we create a new character this item from from this thing this temporary character is shallow copied so the pointer isn't this isn't a new inventory but it starts pointing to the other character's inventory and when that is deleted we have a big problem Right? Everything is pointing to the same place in memory. We don't have two separate copies, but we have two different characters p pointing to the same uh, item array. And we don't want that, right? And another problem was, was our initialize function was kind of weird. The zero here, I didn't add that. So you want to do that. You want to give it a default value of zero. So the first time we initialize something is going to be here. This is something we didn't have before either. So make sure you add that. And change this to five. Uh, so we can test the expansion later in an easier way. But put this in here and initialize everything. And that was also an issue, is that when I was deleting the whole thing, um, we hadn't initialized everything to null pointers. So that meant that we were trying to delete pointers that had uh, weird values. They, they were undefined values. And you cannot delete that without a crash. If they're null pointers, you can delete them, even if they're not pointing to something. So make sure you initialize everything so these two things are important and what else I added was this really important thing called a copy constructor now it's just like a constructor and it, what does a constructor do well it's always called once only once when the object is created and this is when the object is created regularly right it's just when you just create an object uh, on the fly like uh, int i or something but this is a copy constructor. It's, it is used instead when the object is created using another object. So instead of int i equals 0, it is int i equals a, where a is another integer, for example, right? Int a. So this object is created using another object. So what happens is that if we don't define this, C++ is going to use its default copy constructor, which is just, you know, uh, object once uh, uh, a variable is objects twos a variable and so on it just it's just going to use this this operator for every member variable well we don't want that not in case of pointers because if a pointer is pointing to something uh, in data in the in, in a in the memory the new object should have a copy of that data not point to the same data because that's what happens if you start pointing item array to another object's item array it's going to destroy it right so item array uh, equals item array of another object is wrong, right? What you want is a new item array. So, well, kind of simplified, but still, uh, that's what you want to do. And for that, we need to say to C++, hey, bro, I need to do this in a specific way, so you're going to have to use my own copy constructor. And what that does here in specifics is that it uses some of this shallow copying for a bunch of stuff, right? It, it, like the number of items and the capacity. We want those to be the same. But the item array has to be a new item array with that size. And then we have to copy over stuff from the other uh, inventory into this inventory, the new one. 
right? We don't want to just point these to the other ones. So we do that. We, we create a big copy of everything and give it its own place in memory. And then we initialize the whole thing. And then just copy this and make sure you try to understand that. I, I, I think I explained it in, in some way uh, properly, but I hope uh, if you need more help, go to my example videos. I'll be making some example videos on this, explaining it more in detail. Uh, but you have the operator here as well, so we don't have to use a get function we can just use this operator and we overload it by doing this returning a reference to item don't forget the reference because remember we can't create an item it's going to give us an error we need to re return a reference to that item and add a specific index right so you do that uh, and, and as well just add this size cost return number of items so we can loop through all of these uh, but yeah copy this and then create a indexing operator, overloaded indexing operator. Now, I haven't done videos on this either on my examples channel, but uh, or examples uh, playlist, but I'll I'll do that. Uh, operator indexing operator, and just check if the index is within the bounds of the array, so we don't try to access something outside. And then, if that's okay, we just return the item at that position. And re remember to dereference it, so we don't return the pointer, but we return the object right and that should be it that should be fine that should be great uh, and initialize what that basically does we we was a while back we made inventory so we could just recap um, it goes from a index to the end of the whole array okay the capacity not the number of objects but the whole capacity even the empty items the non-valuable items and it just makes that null pointer so when you expand it we can go from the valuable item, one after the valuable item, and just make everything null pointer after that. Kind of just clean the empty space, you know, just just clean it out. Just make sure it's not pointing to something weird. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's it. That's inventory. And we had to kind of clean this up and do this now because before the next video because it's kind of uh, kind of a bad thing to just leave in the open. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I got this in. So all our systems are now complete. We can put stuff in weapons and armors into inventory, and we should be fine. These are the only weapons and armors uh, that that's, that's going to be outside of of uh, of the uh, what do you call it, the inventory, right? These are the actual weapon and armor we're going to be using. So what we're going to add here is armor, chest, uh, armor, armor, head. Okay, we want a bunch of stuff. Uh, armor, armor, arms, armor, legs, armor. Well, we can just keep it to those four, right? We can we can add a bunch more if we want. But uh, then we'll create a shield class, and we'll create a ring class, and a necklace class, or, or a trinkets class, basically. And, and we'll just go on from there and just add stuff to the inventory, and you can do whatever you want, okay? So inventory is pretty much complete. Now, 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 now. That should be fine. We just have to test this now. First, we're going to run it without doing anything. Just see so everything, inventory stuff works well. It does. Lail. And let's print Lail out. This is Lail. Remember, the problem was when we created a new character, Lail2. Now we'll see that the shallow copying is gone. It's deep copying now. So Lail2 works. Okay, it worked. It did not crash because we weren't pointing weirdly to other inventories. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, um, just go into game just to try this out. We're going to make an inventory. We're going to shove a bunch of stuff in there. So uh, inventory inv. Okay, we're going to add inv, add item, we're going to add a weapon. Okay, just an empty weapon. Remember, we can do this because we have a bunch of default values in here, so it's just going to give us none, right? Now, I could give it a web1 thing, but then I'd have to give it everything else as well, I think. Or wait, wait, I have to give it 0, 0, and then web1, and I could stop there. Um, because you can't just give it one, you have to give it all the ones before and then the one you want, the parameter you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Web one, I'm going to add two, three weapons and three armors. Armor. Now type 
is one defense one one or zero, zero whatever zero zero and arm one and then arm two arm two and this is five now I'm gonna add one more armor to test the expansion so remember in inventory our here was five right the capacity was five now if it goes over five it's going to expand it's gonna call the expand function because in our add item see if it goes over capacity it's going to expand and then add the item so to check this expansion if it works we add one more above five and that's gonna give us a let's see that worked it did not crash now let's try this okay that worked as well the characters created now what we can do we could go one above this and go ahead and print these uh, make a for loop go into your inv dot size oh, whoops dot size checks the size and then it just because uh, remember item has a function called debug print and since we inherit from item we get all the public functions from item so debug print is accessible to us from any of these armor or weapon so uh, we could just go ahead and print this out he see out in now we can use this indexing operator because we created it in here we created this or defined the overloaded it basically so dot debug print std and line so it's gonna print out the name of all of these items Yep, web one, web two, web three, arm one, arm two, blah 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 blah, all that. Le, 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 and then we just go ahead and print that dude out, and it's like, bam, we're good, okay, and we quit this, and we're fine. So this shows that our inventory system is working, and we're good. Now I didn't want to leave you without this, so I made this extra video on that. This should have been contained in the older video, but I'm sorry about that. The problem has been rectified, and we'll keep working on this in the next video. So thanks for watching. Take care. Keep working hard. Have a great day, great evening, all that stuff. I love you guys and your support. Thank you so much. And I hope you learned something, right? I hope you I hope you learn something every time. So yeah, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.